so good morning, everyone. I'm Qing Gangyue from University of Massachusetts Law. Today, my presentation title is My Google Glass Sees Your Password. Actually, this, this title can be replaced with My iPhone Sees Your Password or My Smartwatch Sees Your Password. In this research, we use such kinds of smart devices to take a video of people tapping on their touch devices. And by analyzing the videos, we try to retrieve your password. So this work is, pre we just use Google Glass as an example. This work is collaborated with these people, and the Professor Xin Wenfu is my advisor. So let's get started. Actually, this presentation contains five parts. In the first part, I will introduce the motivation of our research and some related work. In the second part, I will talk about the detail of this attack. In the third part, I will show you the evaluation, how well this attack works. In the third part, I will talk about how to defeat such kind of attack and introduce our privacy-enhancing keyboard. In the last part, I will conclude this, this presentation. So let's get started to, intro to the introduction part. Nowadays, smart devices are ubiquitously used, and I believe most of you have a smartphone now. But this, most devices are equipped with a camera, and this camera can spy on people typing sensitive and inputting sensitive information, such as your passcode. By, by analyzing the video taken by such smart devices, we can retrieve your passcode. So this picture shows one possible scenario. In the classroom, the girl wears the Google Glass. He turns around, spying on the boy in the back row, typing his iPad passcode. By analyzing the video taken by the Google Glass, the girl can have the, the boy's iPad passcode. So there are some related work in this area. We classify them into three groups. The first group directly identifies text on screen or its reflections on the object. And some attackers even use the telescopes to do this. In the second group, they detect the visible features of the case when touched. For example, some keyboards have the light diffusing surrounding the pressed case, while some keyboards have key pop-ups when keys are tapped. So the attackers use such kind of information as an indication to retrieve the passcodes. In the third group, they blindly recognize the text input on mobile devices while the text or the pop-up don't appear on the screen. And our, our research belongs to this group. So there's one most related work. They use computer vision techniques to recognize the possible task case and use a language model to correct the prediction. This work focuses on the meaningful taxes, for example, your email message. But for the passwords, since the passwords don't have a pattern, and they, this work have a poor success rate. In, in our research, we use completely different uh, techniques, and uh, we focus on the passcodes and are able to recognize the password with a success rate as high as more than 90%. So let me show you how we did this. As we said, this is kind of blind recognition. So we assume the naked eyes can't see any, any any text or pop-ups on this screen as shown in the left image. But we assume we should be able to see the screen and your fingertip movement in the video. The basic idea of this work is we track the first track the fingertip movement and then identify a test point and map each location to a reference image of the software keyboard using a homography relation between the two images. These two images illustrate this basic idea. This is a touching frame. We know in this frame, the fingertip touches the screen. If we can locate the test point, P, and calculate the homography relation between these two images, we can just map it to the point Q in the reference image of the software keyboard. As we can see, the, refer the reference image of the software keyboard, the key layout is very clear. So once we know which point is the test point, we map it and can retrieve the key. For example, in the red image, we can see the map, map point Q falls into the key area of the key five. So five is the test key. So we, in detail, we have seven steps. 
So our first step is to take videos, of course. So in the conference, in the conference room, such as in our conference room, or in the classroom, or even use in the cafeteria, the attackers can use Google Glass, web camera, smartphone camera, or even smartwatch to take, to take videos. They can take the videos sneakily. Uh, there are some fa factors that would affect the quality of this ca video. The camera angle, the distance, and the lighting. As we mentioned, we need to make the screen and the touching fingertip in the video. So we need to adjust the camera angle at a distance to record the device and your moving fingertip. About the distance, for such kind of, of wide angle camera, the iPhone camera, the Google Glass, or the smartwatch, they can't take a video from a long distance, for example, 30 meters, it can't do that. But the cam camcorders can work at a high quality and a longer focal length. It can take the videos from maybe 50 meters away or even longer. In our experiments, we used it at about 44 meters. It works very, very well and take a very clear video. So this frame is one is frame from the video taken by the web camera. So this is an example of video by the Google Glass. From, from this video, we can see the, the, the screen the, of the device and the finger is touching. So we can see there's, there's no pop-up or text appears on this screen. So as, as we just showed you, in that video, there are a lot of backgrounds. But we are only interested in the screen and your moving hand. So we, in, the, in step two, we do some pre-processing to keep the area of your fingertip and the touch screen. To do this, we apply the deformable path-based model, also called the DPM. It is an object tracker to track the area of the, of the iPad and uh, get the pad in the video. The, the left image shows the trained DPM iPad model from different angles. The first column shows the, of the whole pattern of the iPad. We can see it's the, the contour of the iPad is very clear. It's, these are these four edges of the iPad. The, the middle column shows the, the, object, the parts of this object. Normally, we have six parts. The red column shows the relative lo location between the different parts and the whole object. So if we apply this DPM train the iPad model to the video frames, we can get the iPad detected. In the red image, the green bounding box bounds the iPad. So even after the step two, the pre-processing step, we have a lot of frames in the video, but which are the touching frames? By touching frame, I mean in this frame, your fingertip touches the screen. So in step three, we want to detect the touching frames. To, de to, to, to do this, we derive a pattern of the touching process. As we can see from the video I just showed you, in the touching process, your fingertip first moves downward toward the screen. Then it stops, touches the screen. And then it uh, moves upward, leaving the uh, screen. So during this process, actually, the fi your fingertip, the velocity of your fingertip Change, the direction changes from downward to upward. So we can tr the turning points can be regarded as a past, past frame. So in this frame, the, the velocity of your fingertip is, should be zero as, since it stops touching the screen. So we can track your fingertip. But uh, as we can see, for different touches, you may use a different area of your fingertip to touch the screen. And also, there's not enough feature points to track. After careful analysis, after further analysis, we found that during the task process, our fingers almost keep the same, the same gesture during the task process. So we can track feature points on the whole hand by optical flow. Optical flow can get its, uh, its, the velocity of the points. So then we use the frame in which velocity of most tracked points change the direction as the touching frame. In this image, the green dots are the feature points we tracked. And this frame is the touching frame we detected. So as, as introduced before, to retrieve the task key, to retrieve the task key, we first need to know the task point, and then 
need to calculate the homography relation between the touching frame and the reference image of the software keyboard. So in step four, we want to develop the homography matrix. So according to the theory of planar homography, we need at least the four, point, four pairs of corresponding points to calculate the homography matrix. An intuition is that we can use the four corners of the screen. They are with the red, red circle in the left image. We can use these four corners and the four corners of a reference image to calculate it. Well, this co these four corners can be regarded as the intersection of the four edge lines. So to develop the fourth line, we first apply the candy edge detector to detect the edges, and then apply the half line transform to guide the lines. After getting the lines, we just calculate this intersection and get the, get the corners. So if we apply the same procedure to the reference image of the software keyboard, we get its four corners. And using these four pairs of corresponding points, we can de develop the homography matrix. So in the following three steps, we want to locate the test point. Once the time point is located, we just use the just computed the homography matrix to map it to the reference image, and then we can get the test k. So in step five, we want to, to know where is the touching fingertip in the touching frame we, divide, we detected. So to do this, we again turn to the DPM object detector to locate the touching fingertip in the touching frames. The left, the left image shows the trained DPM touching fingertip model. We can see the, the first column shows the whole pattern. And if we pay attention to this model, we can see the upper part characters the fingertip here. And the middle part of this model characters the shadow formed when you touch the screen. And the lower part of this model characters the reflection of on your touch screen. The middle column shows the thick parts of this object model. And uh, the, the, the red the red column shows the location relation between the six paths and the whole object model. So if we apply this DPM touching fingertip model to the touching frame we just developed, we can look at the touching fingertip detected. On the red image, we can see there's a green bounding box. This bounding box is given by the DPM, and it bounds the finger touching fingertip well. So we know where's the touching fingertip in the, in the touching frame, but which area the fingertip touches? So in step six, we want to estimate the test area. So estimate the test area, we first develop the fingertip contour. If we pay attention to the rectangle, the red rectangle in the left image, we can see the fingertip has the, is much brighter than the screen. So we can use k-means clustering to cluster the pixels around in this rectangle into two groups, and the bright, the bright group indicates the fingertip contour. So from this middle image, we can see the bright area is the fingertip contour. Then we develop the test area. To develop the test area, we first fit a line over the, contour, the central points of the contour and get the fingertip direction on top. We can see the white line in the middle image indicates your fingertip touching direction. And this point is the task, the fingertip top. Then we change the task, actuator task area with a narrow, uh, narrow small rectangle as the actuator task area. This is showing with the green bounding box in the red image. So we already know where the your fingertip touches on the screen. So if we can locate the task point, then we just map it to the reference image keyboard and can derive the task key. In this image, we can see on the left, the green dot is a task point. If we map it and use the homography we calculate to the reference image, we get the map point on the, on the red image, the green dot. It falls into the key area of five. So five is the task key. So how do we locate this task point? Let's come into the details. Actually, if you analyze, when, you touch, when your finger touches the screen, there will be a shadow formed around the fingertip. If we analyze, analyze the test area and 
of this image and the image, image formation process, we can find when you touch the screen, your upper part of the signal table has a sufficient light, and it is very bright. So it's corresponding to the bright area in the image. In the lower part, there is not enough light. So it is, it is dim, so it corresponds to the gray area in the image. In the part where your fingertip touches the screen, there's no light. So is this corresponding to the dark area in the image? Since the touch screen has the function of reflection, so there will be the virtual image of your fingertip on the screen. And correspondingly, there will be the dark area and the, the virtual image gray area and the virtual image bright area in the image. According to the theory of the image formation process and the shadow formation process, we can find that uh, the test point T0 should be in the upper part of the dark area. So we can, uh, we can use the K-means clustering to cluster this test area into five groups and we can get the dark area. We just use the center of the upper part of the dark area as the accurate test point. So getting this test point, we just map it to the reference keyboard and get the test key. So let's show me how well this method works. Actually, we carried out extensive experiments with the web camera spying on the iPad. Um, and we, we tested it under different lighting environments, uh, and the 12 volunteers uh, participated in the experiments. And uh, the videos are taken in the front of the victim, in, on the left, and on the right. From this table, we can see we have a first time success rate uh, more than 90%, and have a second time success rate uh, more than of this more than 18%. For the second time, we have uh, more than 90% success rate. By first time, we mean we just give the most possible candidate. By second time success rate, we mean if the, second time, the first time we are wrong, we will give another candidate. This candidate may be in some human vision. This, we can try two times is reasonable since most devices can be used to try two times before it is really locked. So corresponding to the second time success rate, we have a predicted success rate of more than 97%. So by this, we mean for every indiv individual key touch, we have a prob probability of more than 0.97% to retrieve it correctly. So we also test uh, su how the distance will access, uh, affect the success rate. We did this uh, experiment with the uh, web camera spying on the iPad. From this, fig from this figure, we can see the trend is when you increase the distance, the success rate decreases. The reason is when you increase the disk case, the key size in the video is very, becomes smaller, and it will more, be more difficult to locate the test point. Um, in, in, as to the web camera, we can see at, two me, at three meters, it still works very, very well. We have a 100, in our experiment, we have a 100% success rate at three meters for the second time. But at four meters, the accuracy decreases sharply. This is because at four meters, the, the key in the image is very small, just a few pixels, and it's very difficult to locate the test point. So we also carried out extensive experiments to compare the different targets and the cameras. For the targets, we include the iPad, iPad, Next 7, and iPhone. For the cameras, we used uh, the web camera, the iPhone 5 camera, and the Google Glass. For every group, we carried out uh, 30 experiments uh, around 8 feet away in the front. From the experiments, we can see for, every, for all the tests, we have the first time more than 80%, and the second time more than 90%. So especially for, the web, for different cameras, we can see the web camera, the iPhone camera, and the Google Glass towards the iPad, the iPhone camera works better. This is because the iPhone camera has a higher quality, and uh, it has a longer focal length. So the case in the, taking, in the video taken by the iPhone camera are larger, and it's easier to locate the test point. As to the Google Glass, we can see we still have a second time success rate more than 90%. 
So indeed, my Google Glass can see your password. We also test the different kinds of keyboard, the pin lock, the pin lock keyboard and the QWERTY, QWERTY keyboard. We did experiments with the web camera towarding the iPad QWERTY keyboard and the iPhone QWERTY keyboard. From these two columns, we can see the second time success rate is more than 93%. The, comparingly, the web camera the, towards the iPad QWERTY keyboard works better. This, if you pay attention, you can find the iPad QWERTY keyboard is much larger than the iPhone QWERTY keyboard. So correspondingly, the keys in the image is, is much larger, and it will be easier to locate the test point. So we also used the camcorder to do some experiments. The purpose is to show that our attack can be deployed remotely. This, this image, this picture shows the attack scenario. From this scenario, we can see the attacker hides in the fourth, building, fourth floor of this building with a camcorder. And the t victim sits across the street with an with a iPad. The distance between them is around 44 meters, so it's a very long distance. And we carried out 30 experiments under this scenario, and we have a 100% success rate. This demonstrates the severity of our attack. So how to defeat such kind of attack? So let's come to the countermeasures. As we mentioned, the, our attack depends on the homography relation between the touch, touching frame and the reference image of the software keyboard. This is because the case on, on the software keyboard is, is fixed, so you can get the reference image of the software keyboard. So, but if the keyboard is randomized, and you can't get the reference image, image. So this method won't work. According to this idea, we developed the privacy enhancing keyboard. This is a contact-aware random software keyboard. When you input the sensitive information, for example, your passcode or your bank account pin code, the, this, this keyboard will pop up with the randomized keyboard. And if you input the normal information, such as your email message, it will just pop the normal keyboard. Actually, we developed the two versions. On the left image, we can see is the first version. This key, the key layout is randomized. The keys are placed in, in different area, in different area, every time you input a key. The second version is, on, is shown on the right image. We can see the keys in the the keys can fly or move in this keyboard area following a brown moving pattern. So let me conclude this presentation. So as, as, as we demonstrated, the sneaky, cam sneaky, cam sneaky cameras can take away your passcode, and our attacker by tracking the fingertip movement, take fingertip movement and to recognize the test keys had a high success rate. So it's not a fluke. And this attack can be made automatic. Um, you, can use, you, you can use our privacy enhancing keyboard to resist such kind of attack. This is on, this is on Google Play now, and it's free. If you don't want to use our privacy enhancing keyboard, one recommendation is that you don't, you don't input sensitive information in, your, in the public place. For example, don't do the online banking in the public place. Or at least you, you, you need to do some protection. For example, you can cover, it, uh, cover the screen with your hand. Uh, several weeks ago, we gave a demo to CNN. So you can watch the demo at the CNN Money with the title, Google Glass Warriors Can Steal Your Password. I think the CNN website still have this video. So that's all my presentation. Thank you. Thank you.